Hey Geo Nerds, here we are at Kalang on the north side of Brisbane. We're going to talk about a fault that runs from just south of here, way up past Wamuran. And this is a serious fault. It's dropping the whole eastern side of Brisbane down into Moreton Bay. Oh, it's not that serious, as you probably know. But it's worth knowing about because it's really set the entire structure of that side of Brisbane, including the hydrocarbon deposits out in the bay. Yeah, drilling for oil in Moreton Bay. It's already been done. Uh, all of the um, uh, the mineralisation around Bald Hills, all of the uh, weathered basalts, and even, even some very rare deposits around Burndall. Anyway, we'll look into that more in some more videos, but right now, we're gonna have a look at this fault. You know what I'm gonna say? Let's, Let's rock. rock. Well, there we are, folks. We've just come out past the pathetic wheel of Brisbane. We're heading up here to Petrie, right here, just in that paddock down there. This is the beginning of the Bracalba Fault. It runs up through Kalanga here, past uh, Dakaman, and up through Lakeside. Heads right up through uh, behind um, Belmere, I think it is. And we go right up through Upper Caboolture. There's the rain bar there. I'm looking good. I think that's all houses now. Upper Caboolture, this is the uh, Sheep Station Reserve. I must go have a look at that one day. Heading up through here, it's running right through this countryside here. Past uh, Whamuran. Go zip up here a little bit to have a look at where we're going. And these quarries up here mark the end of the fault uh, because they hit a big igneous intrusion, which we'll talk more about that later. Big pile of granite. Those quarries are owned by the Brisbane City Council, by the way. It ends right in that paddock there. Yeah, let's pull back, have a quick look. Pretty close to Brisbane. There's Redcliffe and Brizzy down there. So let's have a look at some more. So what's Bracalba famous for? Well, a lot to do with faults, actually. It's rock. There's a big quarry up there owned by the Brisbane City Council, strangely enough, and it produces all manner of igneous rocks. It produces decomposed granite, which looks like this, known as deco. In the building industry, a thousand and one uses, amazing stuff. It produces this, which is granite, um, of various types, but it's a good quality hard granite. It also produces this quartz monzonite, occasionally. And this is granite that doesn't have quite as much quartz in it. If you want to see a good example of quartz monzonite, here it is here. This is Castle Hill, Castle Hill if you come from Townsville. Uh, and both Castle Hill and Mount Stewart are massive pieces of quartz monzonite. Beautiful, hard, pink, in this particular case, rock. Well, folks, today we're going to talk about faults. Yeah, perhaps not that type of fault. But anyway, there are four types of geological faults on this planet. The normal fault, which is what we're dealing with on the Bracalba Fault. The strike slip fault, which is, of course, the San Andreas Fault. The reverse fault. Now, that happens in Australia, in, down in Bass Strait. A lot of the hydrocarbon pockets down there were created by reverse faulting in Bass Strait. And the thrust fault, which is what happens at the continental plate boundaries. You hear about mega thrust earthquakes. So, they're the four types of faults you can get. And today, we're dealing with a normal fault. So 
So folks, in a normal fault, you have a foot wall and a hanging wall. In our case, the foot wall's not going up, the hanging wall's going down. And the foot wall is the Aaron Lee Fernvale complex, which is right through Brisbane and right up to the ranges. And the hanging wall is the Morton Bay side of this fault. And it's been slipping down, slipping down over 90 million years. It hasn't slipped very far, but it has slipped. And we can prove that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a look at the geology. And I have a, now you know what faults are, we can talk about gravens because I think the whole of Moreton Bay is a graven. So geologically, folks, this is a pretty busy part of Australia. Uh, there's the North Pine Fault, which is a major fault. That's actually a um, strike slip fault. And you can see there's been multiple volcanic intrusions into this area. And there's our fault on the right there, the uh, Bracalba Fault. This finishes up there past Wamuran in that volcanic intrusion. Let's have a look at the geology of the overall area. Uh, I know we've seen this before, but I think it'll take on some more importance in the future. Look, a series of videos coming, so I've got some proposals about what's happening under Moreton Bay and uh, I, I was fascinated by it. So we're gonna zoom down here to Petrie, which is the official start of this fault. Maybe not, you can see the black line starting there just after the railway lines converge. It heads up and there's a boundary between the, um, the um, Coomba group and the Landsber Sandstone that is so stark up to Wamuran and then it slams into that volcanic group which I'll describe for you in the next section. In the next section we'll do a 3D fly up on this starting from Petrie Kalanga and going right up to uh, uh, to um, Bacalba. Let's have another look at this a little bit further back. As you can see, there's a strike slip fault there, which is a North Pine fault, but the Brocalba fault is not like that. It has no north-south offset whatsoever. It is purely vertical. In fact, the uh, uh, Morton Bay side of it is sinking. The uh, uh, eastern side of it, uh, the, sorry, the western side of it is not. Well, folks, we're just starting out down here at Petrie. There's a Petrie railway station over there on the far left, and we're going to head straight up through Kalanga. Well, here we go, folks. We're flying up the Bracalba Fault here. That's that uh, black line there. We're just going to uh, stop here and have a look at the geology. So that's the Landsborough Sandstone. It's about 200 million years old, and there's a lot of it up here. This is the uh, Karwamba beds, similar to the, to the narrowly Fernbowl beds, but a little bit younger. There they are, early um, Carboniferous. This is our old mate, the uh, Brisbane Tuff. And that little bit there is the northernmost extent of the Brisbane Tuff. And it is, of course, Triassic. It's about 200 million years old. So let's move on. There's more to see. Well, here we go, folks. We're mobile again. Lakeside Raceway there. As you can see, the fault just skirts down through the... Uh, through the lake to the, uh, actually it's a bit offset there, it's pretty weird. Little bits of turf, you can see the Coomba formation on our left, and you can see the Landsborough sandstone on our right. And there's a fairly distinct line. Now, just consider this, there's a hundred million years across that line. How is that possible? I'm gonna show you in a minute. If you stand on one of those roads and find that line, you take five or six paces, you're stepping across a hundred million years. All that light yellow and light green there, that's just gravel from the riverbed, so it's quite new. And uh, unfortunately, our little Queensland Globe took a while to catch up here. Little tiny pocket of igneous over there, just all by itself. And she starts to spin around. It's, it loses its uh, linear line here. Uh, and up we go, and we're heading up to um, uh, to Wamuran there. Lovely little town, Wamuran. I really like it. And then you can see the big igneous intrusion coming up here. So let's just stop and have a look at this. Now, this is the Neurum complex. It's one of the largest igneous complexes in southeast Queensland. 
and it is late Triassic, so it's contemporaneous with this, the inaugural granites, uh, all of the other granitic intrusions in southeast Queensland. But it's huge, it goes right up to Conondale, and its chemistry changes in places and the rock type changes, but granitic rocks is what it contains, basically. But you'll notice that the fault stops right there. So this tends to indicate that this granitic intrusion intruded into the Landsborough sandstone and the Coomba beds and destroyed the fault because it doesn't continue out the other side. So that is where it stops. So Geo nerds, how do we get a hundred million year gap between two rocks that are butted right up against each other? Well, this is how we do it. We have a fault and then we erode it back to here. Vanilla, we'll go 90 million. Chocolate, 200 million. You got a 100 million year gap right there once it's eroded down. This is what I believe has happened on the, on the Racalba Fault. But I think it's more complex than that. Let's explore that slightly. Let me introduce you to Horst and Graben, and particularly Graben in this case. This is what happens when the Earth's crust gets stretched. Eventually, it cracks and a graben is formed where it slips down. You get two normal faults on either side and a lowered section. And I believe the whole of Morton Bay is a graben. And why? Well, we'll blame the bloody Kiwis. 83 million years ago, Zealandia split off from Gondwana. When it did that, it widened the Tasman Sea. The Tasman Sea was formed and it stretched the continental coast, crust of Australia on the east coast. So GeoNerds, it's my hypothesis that the Bracalba Fault is actually part of a fault system that starts up at Bracalba, Waymuran, runs down through where it says it is, but I think it then goes right down through Shawncliffe down across Nudgee, down through Wynnum, uh, Cleveland, and right down to the southern edge of Moreton Bay. Because I believe off Moreton Bay, off Moreton Island, is the other side, but unfortunately the continental shelf has intercepted it. So I'm going to do a series of videos on the um, Petrie Formation, which is within that scope, and I believe the Petrie, the Petrie Formation exists because of that grabbing. And the Petri formation's about 80 to 95 million years old. How about that? That sort of lines up. So it contains a bunch of stuff, and we'll go into that over the next few videos. But this fault was an introduction, and uh, I don't think many people know it exists. Is it a danger to us? No, it is not. Uh, I don't think the, uh, uh, the uh, northern suburbs bridge is going to drop any time soon. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, it's estimated it's dropped about 20 or 30 metres in the last 20 million years. So don't panic, it'll be all right. Hey, Gianna, it's that's it for this week. This part of the world, the Bracalba Waymuran area, as you can see, is just one of the most beautiful parts of this planet. And I've seen quite a lot of this planet. And uh, if you haven't been up that way, go for a drive, have a look around. There's lots of places, Woodford, Diagula, Whamuran, not much at uh, Brocalba unless you want to collect some rocks, but uh, or Chessie if you can find the fault. Anyway, beautiful part of the world. More videos coming. Uh, thanks for your support while I've been away. I'm back now, back on the, uh, on the editing. Uh, while we're in this area, uh, my mate John from Off Track Explorer did an awesome video a week or two ago on the search for Shirley Strawn's helicopter crash site. And I mention it because it's in this area. And in that video, you get to see it, uh, some beautiful parts of this area. And, and uh, I won't spoil it for you, but yeah, John usually achieves his goals and he did this time. So I'll put a link to it in the description. It's an awesome video. Anyway, till next time, you know what I'm going to say. Keep, Keep rocking. rocking. T-Rox out. Rocking with T-Rox, he's the man, he'll show you.